There are three main types of stairs in Revit. One is a precast, the second is a cast in place, and the third is an assembled stair. Let's first look at a precast stair. Zoom into the staircase over on the left hand side by just spinning the wheel of your mouse. With the precast stair, if we select on it, we can come up to Edit Type underneath Properties to see the type properties of the staircase. For this precast stair, we have options to set the overall maximum riser height, the depth of the tread, the run type contains the shape of the tread, should it be rounded off or does it come to a point. There's also information related to the thickness of the landing itself, as well as what kind of connection is associated with this precast stair. As we can see here, we have a notch which is four inches by four inches at the end of the staircase, and it notches into the landing up above. If we wanted to change the gap, in this case, three eighths of an inch, between the staircase and the landing, we could do that from here. As far as adjusting the overall properties of the notch, we could change that from here as well. If we wanted to change this notch extension to be six inches instead of four inches, we could change it here, select on apply, and you'll notice that the extension gets longer here inside of our section view. If we wanted the notch to be a little bit thinner, maybe three inches instead of four inches, click on apply, and then we'll see that adjustment be made. For this staircase though, I'd like to bring it back to the four inches and four inches that it was before, and select on apply to readjust it back to its previous state. Also, where we have the run type, I mentioned before that this is what controls the overall shape of the nosing here on the treads. Well, if we select where it has three quarter inch nosing, six and a half inch depth, and then select on the little button to the right of it, we can find some of the hidden properties that make up this kind of staircase. We can see that the underneath side of the staircase is supposed to be smooth, and that's opposed to seeing it step up on the underneath side of the staircase. To see that, if we select where it has smooth, we can click, change that to stepped, and then click on apply, and now we can see how it steps itself down. Let's change that back by coming back to stepped and change it to smooth, select on apply. Then you have the structural depth, which is six and a half inches from here to here. That's how deep the overall structure will always be. We then have the material for the staircase, as well as the nosing profile, what's that shape on the end of the staircase, and a few other properties associated with the stair. Now, if we select on OK, there's also options related to the landing. So if we select where it has the eight inch thickness, click on the little button next to it. From here, we can see the materials that make up our landing, as well as the overall thickness of the landing. And if we would clear the checkbox next to same as run, we could then assign properties to it for any tread or nosing length information, which may be associated with the ends of our landing. Now I'll just leave all this information the same by clicking on OK, click on OK. Now let's take a look at our next staircase by zooming out and then zooming in to our cast in place staircase. A cast in place is usually a staircase which is poured on site, so one concrete pour. That's the reason why we're not seeing a notch here on the end. Now, if we select on the staircase, we can come over here to edit type, and we'll notice that we have the same riser height and tread depth options that we had before on the other staircase. But one of the options that we don't have is for that notch, and that's because a monolithic stair does not have that notch property associated with it. It also has the same kind of properties related to the run type, which is the nosing information, as well as the landing information. All that can be adjusted here inside of the monolithic stair. I'll click on OK to that, zoom out, and then zoom over to the right-hand stair, which is an assembled staircase. Now, this is the kind of staircase that would typically be assembled on site. It's usually made out of either steel or wood or some material along those lines. Typically not a concrete stair, though it may have concrete pour for the top of the treads as well as the landing. Now, if I wanted to make a change to this stair, I could select on the staircase and come over here to Edit Type. Here underneath Edit Type, we can see that we have the same kinds of properties that we had before. But we'll also notice that for the supports, instead of none, we now have options for strainers. And from here, we can either have a closed strainer or a carriage or an open strainer, or we can specify that we don't wanna have a strainer at all. There's also options here for the right support type and left support type. Well, if we click where we have that kind of strainer, there'll be a little box over to the right-hand side. 
If we select there, this is where we have the materials for our strainer, as well as the section profiles for the strainer. Now, an example of what you might do with a section profile would be, instead of having a rectangular shape on the underneath side of your staircase, perhaps you wanted to have a strainer that was a C shape, metal channel. To do that, we could come down here to where it has default, click, and then pick any profile shape that we want to create. In this case, the C channel profile and then assign that to the staircase. So if we just click on apply, we now have that C shape associated with the staircase. One other thing that I'd like to do, I know that this C channel is flipped the wrong direction. So if we put a check mark here, it'll flip it so that it's not facing in, it'll be facing out. So we'll be able to see the C shape when we look at it in a 3D view. If I click on OK to that, then click on OK one more time. Now let's take a look at our staircases in a 3D view. So come up here and select on the default 3D view button. As we can see, we have the precast stair, the cast in place stair, and then the stair that we just made a property change to. This is that C channel, and it's called a C channel because it looks like the letter C as far as its shape is concerned. And this is an assembled staircase. In Revit, you have three different kinds of staircases, and they each have their own sets of properties associated with them. The precast stair, which is the only one that gives you the option for a notch. The cast in place stair, which is very similar to the precast, except it doesn't have that notch option. And then the assembled stair, which is your typical wood or steel stairs, the kind that you see in most buildings.